Every day, something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. How's Eddie Fedrick? So glad you can join us. A call for fresh elections in Tobago for the House of Assembly. This story takes a lead in today's edition of Caribbean Perspective for Wednesday, 26 April 2023. Details when we return. Hubbard's Motor Department, Mount Gay, and Hubbard's Tire Bay, located at the Building Supplies Compound in Grand Anse, are reminding the motoring public that another round for licensing and inspection has begun. Just arrived are new shipments of quality furrowed and torque tires to fit all makes and models of vehicles at competitive pricing. Shop early to avoid the hassle of long lines. WhatsApp them on 473-405-5482. Hubbard's, quality service, affordable prices. Welcome back. A call for fresh Tobago House of Assembly elections has been made, this time by Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley of Trinidad and Tobago. In a post from the Office of the Prime Minister's Facebook page, Dr. Rowley says, the elected members under the Progressive Democratic Patriots have created a situation where the business of the executive of the Tobago House of Assembly has ended up in the hands of a self-serving group of independents. More from this TTT News item. Dr. Rowley noted that the present executive has no mandate for the people of Tobago, which is concerning. The Prime Minister noted, quote, If the independent political aspirants of the disintegrated PDP wish to be taken seriously by the central government and the people of Tobago, then the Chief Secretary would do well to make arrangements for an early election within the same time frame that he is making to register a new political party with the Elections and Boundaries Commission. End quote. The Post continued, quote, Should this occur without an election, this resultant executive authority without reference to the Tobago electorate would run counter to the espoused lofty principles being espoused of nurturing democracy from the ground up when it is time to form a party, but dispense with the basic tenets for the people by the people democracy when it is time to hold on to office to the exclusion of the electorate. End quote. Prime Minister Rowley said central government will continue to ensure that Tobago benefits from good order and good governance and urged the THA executive once again to subject themselves to the electorate before it is too late as the peace and progress of the people of Tobago are at stake. The Bahamas' Prime Minister Philip Davis speaks on crime in light of the recent murders in the capital. Lydon Davis of ZNS News reports. I'm distressed over all of these um, issues. That's a disturbed Prime Minister, the Honorable Philip Davis, responding to the latest murder involving two men in their early 20s found with gunshot wounds about the body in the Solomons parking lot in the early morning hours on Saturday. Hours later, police were alerted to a third murder far west near Christie Avenue in Stapleton Gardens. To curb these senseless killings, Mr. Davis says scientific data collected suggests that serious intervention methods must take place to rescue our young people from a life of crime. It's one of the things Things that came out at, uh, from a crime violence a conference in, in Trinidad is Dr. David Allen's intervention when he spoke about the abused child being a dangerous adult. And many of uh, persons who are perpetrating these violent crimes, they have discovered in their research was somehow or the other abused at a very young age. And to get the intervention ball rolling, Mr. Davis informed hundreds of young people at a global leadership conference at the University of the Bahamas about the National Youth Guard Program, an initiative that promotes positive ideals. But when questioned about the intent to recalibrate the minds of criminals seeking revenge on our streets, Mr. Davis said this. If you are engaged in criminal activity, the only two outcomes You either spend the rest of your life in jail or you will be executed on the streets, as we are seeing. Mr. Davis assures the public that despite grappling with the high volume of murders on our streets almost daily recently, the saturation patrols beefed up by officers of the Royal Bahamas Police Force are reaping positive results. 
you would have seen over the last several weeks, we have saturation patrol that is working. Uh, we have, you'll see in the next few weeks, a number of vehicles that I've that I've invested in to ensure that we have we have police presence on the street. But as though, even though you have the presence, like I say, a person who is intentional about what they want to do, and they plan it, sometimes it's very difficult to prevent that person from carrying all his plans. All we can do is create the atmosphere to deter them from that. Police presence is 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 a tool we think to deter. Um, 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 deter criminal activity. But in the meantime, Prime Minister Davis says more resources will be granted to the police force to effectively fight crime and keep Bahamians safe. For the Bahamas Tonight, I'm LaDawn Davis. You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick. The government of St. Kitts and Nevis has taken another step closer toward creating a cannabis industry when it activated the Cannabis Act on Monday through its official publication in the Gazette. The Cannabis Act was passed in 2020 and was aimed at setting up a medicinal cannabis authority. However, the legislation was not fully activated. Glenn Bart of SKN Newsline reports. A release from the Prime Minister's office states in part, quote, only parts one and two of the Act, setting out preliminary matters related to the establishment of the Medicinal Cannabis Authority, were activated. End quote. Now, with the legislation fully activated, Minister of Agriculture Samuel Duggins and the Cannabis Authority can now proceed to aggressively pursue the cannabis agenda for St. Kitts and Nevis. However, government has consistently stated that the establishment of the industry will be done in a responsible manner, as said by Prime Minister Dr. Terence Drew in a recent statement. He said, quote, The diversification of our economy involves exploring avenues like the medicinal cannabis industry, which can provide a sustainable income for our people. However, the government is also serious about tackling substance abuse and its impact on the society. This is why the Ministry of National Security is finalizing the National Substance Abuse Plan 2023 to 2028. We are a responsible government and will always act in the best interest of our people's economic growth and physical health. End quote. Lindbergh reporting for SK Newsline. Three police constables who were found guilty for the 2012 shooting death of the 16-year-old schoolgirl Vanessa Kirkland in Jamaica were acquitted of manslaughter charges by the Court of Appeal. Constables Andrew Wayne Smith, Dervin Hales, and Anna K. Bailey were sentenced to 14 years and six months in prison in 2019. They walked free after a panel of three judges highlighted two significant errors by the Supreme Court judge who presided over their trial. More from this CVM Live report. On March 20, 2012, 16-year-old Vanessa Kirkland was shot to death on Norman Lane, Kingston 13. Three police officers, Andre Wayne Smith, Dervin Hales, and Anna K. Bailey, argued they were acting in self-defense when they opened a fire at the blue Suzuki Swift motor car Kirkland was in. Subsequently, in 2019, the trio was sentenced to 14 years and six months in prison for manslaughter, a their attorneys characterized as excessive. They sought an appeal and was successful on Monday when the case, along with the sentence, was dismissed. Director of Public Prosecutions Paula Llewellyn says the dismissal was unavoidable as critical errors were made during the trial, particularly the good character direction and no solid evidence pointing to manslaughter. There were two misdirections, critical misdirections in law by the judge, we agreed that they were two as a matter of law. They were critical misdirections, errors that the judge made. Once we agree on that, it means that we agreed, and I said it, that the conviction would have to be quashed for manslaughter and the sentence set aside. The DPP says efforts are being made to contact Kirkland's family to further explain the update in the case. Meantime, King's Counsel Peterson Penny, who along with Oswest Senior Smith represented the appellants, says that the defendants are not only relieved but elated. They maintained from the start of the proceedings 11 years ago that they were acting 
in their capacity as officers of the law responding to a complaint in relation to a robbery. Mm -hmm. uh, nevertheless, they, they also indicated that the incident concerning the death of this young lady was most unfortunate but it was in no way murder or carelessness. Six other people were shot and injured during what both the prosecution and defense team describe as an unfortunate and tragic situation. During the trials, lawyers representing the police maintained the vehicle was targeted following a complaint that occupants of the car robbed a man of his cell phone. Natalia Clark for CVM Live. A criminologist in Trinidad and Tobago, Dr. Randy C. Passad, weighs in on the crime situation on the court by former Police Commissioner Gary Griffith for the government and opposition to set politics aside to treat with the scourge. TV6's Nicole M. Romney reports. According to Dr. C. Passad, a major part of the existing crime problem is the lack of cooperation, especially in politics. He notes that the country inherited an adversarial system from the British and it is not benefiting the population. It's the one that really pits us against each other. And it, it, it's very counterproductive. One of the big issues that we face is in the legislature, where several times you would have very important pieces of legislature, legislation that requires both government and opposition support. And the opposition will oppose, regardless of whether it's good or bad. So a lot of work would have gone into the legislation, months or years of work, a lot of money spent in bringing it to the point where it gets through Parliament and it gets shut down simply because the opposition will oppose. Dr. C. Prasad believes it's time to put differences and party cards aside for the betterment of Trinidad and Tobago. If we don't pool our resources, if every time a political party changes, we throw the baby out with the bath water, meaning that we throw the good out with the bad, um, we'll get nowhere. And it's like we hit a reset button every time a new political party changes. So, so we definitely need to stop that infighting amongst ourselves. Look at what is happening to the country. Put the country first. Pool our resources. Pool our intellectual resources. Come together. Develop something that's meaningful uh, for the country as a whole and stop seeing each other as enemies. He says, without collaboration, the criminals will continue to run rings around us. Dr. Sipasad warns that the criminals are far more brazen than before. My sense is that something new is emerging, a, a level of criminality that speaks to a, a callousness and a disregard for human life beyond what it was before. Now, it's very, very difficult to pin down what precisely it would be, but criminological theory will guide us. Whether the data will support or not, it's difficult to see, but it seems that the people of Trinidad and Tobago, at least some of the people of Trinidad and Tobago, have reached a level of desperation and hopelessness that it no longer matters what they do. He suggests that perhaps a new system that encourages collaboration should be introduced into the political sphere. Nicole M. Romani. TV6 News. Hubbard is once again innovating the way you shop with its new online store, providing 24-hour shopping convenience. You can shop now for appliances, hardware, houseware, building material, and more. Free delivery island-wide. Start shopping now at hubbardshardware.gd. Safe, convenient, reliable. I am Eddie Frederick. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please continue to log on to CaribbeanPerspective.com for more daily news and more.